On this show, we talk about two minivans, the Toyota Sienna and the Kia Sedona. We also talk about things that make a car fun to drive, next on Talking Cars. Hi there, welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Mike Quincy. I'm Gabe Schoenhauer. And I'm John Linkov. Main subject of this show, a pair of scintillating sexy minivans, the Sienna and the Sedona. But first, it's time for some corrections and clarifications. Um, going back to the last episode, we were talking about where the Chrysler 300 was built and John made a boo-boo. This is, this is the nicest written response that I got. This is from Dylan. Ooh, so close, John. The 300 is built in Brampton. The minivans are the ones built in Windsor. Okay, sorry. I gave you guys props for, you know, your, your plants, but I don't remember where all the plants are. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, our apologies. It's, yep. it's all good. We're good. We're good. We're good. I think we're good. Okay. We, we still have Canadian love. There we go. Uh, next clarification. <laughs> they send us Molson. There. Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. Next clarification. Gabe, you forgot to mention that the Honda CRV now uses the Earth Dreams 2.4 liter direct injected engine to help with the fuel economy improvement as well as the CBT. Well, I couldn't transition. remember if the name of the engine was DreamWorks or Earth Dreams. <laughs> It's like so, a vegan uh, margarine. Anyway, it's exactly. Just... Uh, it has the same displacement. It has the same output. That's the ridiculous thing. Horsepower. It's completely redesigned. So, yeah. Same. Right. Same engine, new marketing. Gold. <laughs> and there you and go. And we only had 17 <laughs> minutes for the podcast. That's right. So uh, we fit in what we can. But you can fit. Oh, watch this segue. But you can fit a <laughs> lot into the minivans parked behind us. We have, our we have the redesigned 2015 Kia Sedona. That's our test car that we own. We also have a press car, the um, a 2015 Toyota Sienna that got some updates. Gabe, what's up? So, uh, yeah, uh, Toyota updated the Sienna. They uh, made it a little quieter, which was really uh, a, a very, very uh, called for kind of uh, update. They uh, stiffened the suspension a little bit, but that's more mm. like uh, splitting hairs, yeah. exactly. And uh, the interior is a little nicer, the little stitch on top of the dash. And uh, the infotainment uh, radio is, uh, is all better. Yeah, it, it's a new dashboard. Michael, how about the Sedona? Uh, Sedona? Well, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a minivan driving daddy. I got two kids, so uh, I, I love all the room. The Sedona, it, it could only get, I guess, can only get better than the last yes, one. That is correct. Um, I, I think it's interesting that before we started the podcast, uh, one of us uh, confused which was which, which kind of suggests the Sedona styling isn't that outlandish or anything. It kind of fits in with the, with the rest of the minivan population. Uh, it's pretty quiet, but it's kind of like typical Sedona, kind of soft riding. Not a lot of uh, steering feedback, and you know, as this will touch the, your heart of hearts, it's no Honda Odyssey. No, no, neither of these are really. I mean, the Sedona, though, you look at it and they tried to make something stylish. Yeah, and I'm struck by, uh, you know, with all that effort to make it stylish, couldn't they at least tuck in the track for the second row under the third window, just oh, like yeah. the Toyota Sienna yeah, did? Yeah, Sienna does that. Which, right. uh, and point. actually, uh, the Chrysler are the ones who started that uh, theme. Yeah, so, but I mean, it's yeah. a good thing to do. You know, that, that Sedona, they spent so much time on cosmetics. I mean, it's got, it's got an actual nose, which minivans typically don't have. I mean, we were joking in the, audience, uh, in the office that it's much like the, the, up, the Chevrolet <laughs> Uplander and the Saturn Relay. And, yeah, <laughs> those were those, the, the dark days of minivans. <laughs> this is done much better than that. Uh, but it's also very stylish inside, isn't it, John? Yeah, two, our, our version, two-tone leather seats in the front first and second row, we have heated seats first and second row. Yeah, it's mid-level too, it's, it's an EX, it's about, right about 35 grand. Yeah, yep. just about, a sweet spot for minivans. But some of the stuff that it doesn't have, some of the safety features, uh, the around view camera, for example, doesn't have. Um, biggest disappointment is navigation, doesn't have navigation, has a very tiny touch screen, and because of the seating position, at least for me, and I know a couple other people have this, the dead pedal is very high, so you're forced back, I had the steering wheel out, felt kind of like NASCAR ride, driving, you know, so pulled in order to fit that I couldn't touch any of the controls with my back against the seat. Are there any good minivans that have a good driving position, though? I mean, the Odyssey's I, a little bit better. The Town and Odyssey is a little bit better. I spent a lot of time in the Odyssey uh, this summer. I took on, on a family vacation, and, and it was okay. Now, the usability of the screens is a different issue, but oh, just yeah, reaching controls yeah. was better. 
this one is it's it's odd ergonomics, and then of course it's got a, a big logo for the U Uvo system by Microsoft. It's like a European <laughs> soccer team, you know, seats by Lear, stick shift by by ZF, you know, Uvo here. I mean, it's it's just kind of tacky. Um, it, it's it's tacky. it's a big step forward, but I don't think it's going to be prime time to play in the league of Siena and Odyssey. No, it's never going to be. It's always going to be might a take marginal over player, town and country just like the sales. Nissan Quest. Uh, yeah. They're all they're all playing. Oh, they're all playing the Quest. Good, good job. Uh, we didn't forget the Quest. Bring in the Quest. Yeah, uh, yeah it's um. You know, there are some good points. Uh, with only 3.3 liters, it's got plenty no, of power. The, yep. the powertrain is as good as it gets. Yeah. Uh, the transmission's smooth, smooth, responsive. The, the, the engine is quiet and punchy. Steering it's, has zero yeah. feel to it. Absolutely zero, mm -hmm. none whatsoever. The ride's I mean, not the, the all whole, that controlled, yeah. not super. Clunky. No, yeah. it's in the suspension department, the Sedona is really, that's where it really falls behind uh, the others in the most significant way. There's a few other weird things too. In order to get a sunroof, you have to go all the way to the limited model. Um, the back, the second and that's one, like $45,000. It's a whole it's bunch of that's, that's crazy money for, yeah. for a van, I mean, uh, but you get lounge chairs with footrests. Mm, that's, that's great for press conferences. It is. It's yeah. great. It's great for auto. Yeah, you can you get the, the Sienna too, right? You can if mm. you get the top of the line limited. Um, again, they look better than they are. Um, another thing that's odd is the second row seats do not come out. All they do is fold forward or the backs fold down. Uh, I mean, I guess if you have heated seats, it'd be hard to do the wiring. And, but I mean, that really cuts into your practicality of how much you could ultimately fit in that van. Sure mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. And then also the launch, you, know, you can't get a, uh, in a video system right now. It's a Dior installed option, which is okay, but it's just not available at this point. So, you know. I mean, yeah, they're starting to trickle in, but I mean, it looks like the video system is going to remain a dealer installed option rather yeah. than something that, you know. Slickly integrated. It's neither here or there with probably every kit having an eye. True. It's just it's odd to not have, you know, something that's somewhat important for a minivan. You know, if you don't have a top tier option available, it's one thing. To have something that's a family vehicle and right. not have that, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a. Yeah, you know, we, we, we keep looking at these vans from a driver's perspective, and we really need to think about it from, from a kid's perspective. You know, how, how, are, how are the kids dealing with, with the second row seats, the third yeah. row seats? How easy is it to, to get back there? And as you brought up, most importantly, the amenities. We're all about to go on our holiday breaks, and some of us are going to be hitting the road. Uh, a, a minivan van with small kids and a rear entertainment system is golden. My name tag is on the Suburban. My <laughs> name tag is on the Suburban <laughs> just for that. Exactly. You know, plus I have to fit a number of people and this would have been great, but it doesn't have the video thing and you know, with two little kids, it, it's a concern. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it is the whole like, shut up here, watch Dora. <laughs> <laughs> wow, not having kids, I will take your word mm. for it. Um, and, and my money. Thoughts on the Sienna, John? Um, it's, it's Blandmobile. You know, it's a little, it's, it's, it's fine inside. It, it's, it just does what you expect of it. I'm a biased towards the Odyssey in the, in the, or lean towards the Odyssey, if you will, in the sense of the, a bit of the feel, the controls, the space. You know, the Sienna, I've just never, I've never been a fan of this generation. You know, it's funny because they're all, it's the swagger wagon, you know, because how dare we call it a minivan? I mean, mm. they're trying so hard <laughs> to just own what it is. Just, yeah, just you know. own what it but, is. But it, for, from a family practicality standpoint. There just is no better vehicle there than is. a minivan. I, I don't care what people say. They're worried about their image. They're worried about the neighbors. But if you have kids, especially kids in child seats, there's nothing beats a minivan. And, and as many of us also know, hauling stuff and people around. I fit two uh, grown men, all of our bikes and all of our gear in the van, in, a, in, in the last uh, generation Sienna that we tested, mm -hmm. without using a bike rack. Hmm. Uh, someone I know really likes kayaking and specifically bought a minivan because the kayak would fit in the back without a rack. He may have bought two of them exactly. before he bought the Durango. So I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the practicality of these things is, is just unmatched. The one, the one thing, a lot of complaints. I know we tested the Sienna all-wheel drive and didn't have a big issue with the tires, but a lot of people who don't pay attention to their tires, they run those run flats down very quickly. They don't grip well once they get worn down a bit and they're mm -hmm. expensive to replace. And I've had yeah. a lot of people come to me, I'm willing to get the can of goo and a compressor. I don't want the run flats. You know, and you have a hard time. Places won't necessarily put a non-run flat on. But they don't have it in stock. So it's, that's an issue with... I mean, because yeah, we've heard them like getting worn out after 20,000 miles. 15,000 miles yeah. one of my, my friends have. Are they? Even in this generation? Yeah. Because they had gotten better miles. in the last generation. Right. You know, and it depends if you pay attention to it and you're diligent. Oh, you, you know, rotate. You know, you rotate. 
Right. That's how. That's what we did because we're going to pay attention to it. But, but I mean, people who don't, they're going to get caught out. You know, I think that's an important point. The Sienna is the only minivan you can buy with all-wheel drive, and that's great. You yeah. know, okay, that that will get a lot of people. But because of that, you lose the space for the spare tire, yeah. which is forcing you to the run flats. You also you cannot get an all-wheel drive that seats eight. They mm -hmm. only seat seven. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's bugging me a bit is uh, when we tested that all-wheel drive Sienna, it got 19 miles per gallon. You know, it used to be, hey, get a minivan. They got better gas mileage than SUVs. SUVs are bad pigs, horrible. Uh, Highlander gets 20. Yeah. Yep. X5 gets 21, 22, maybe. And is only 30 grand more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get two baseline, uh, you know, minivans. You know, when the tires run but, out, but, just throw it away. But you have a valid point. Uh, MDX, what? despite me being a good jerk, you have a valid point. I mean, it's gotten to the point where minivans, or I'm sorry, SUVs can get the same or better fuel economy yeah. than, than minivans. So, so why are we recommending that people buy a minivan except for the, the parents in us? Uh, because there is still nothing more practical for a family. There is an, an SUV has a lot of space. This, mm -hmm. These just these take the case. Six people to the Cape for a week with luggage Honda Odyssey. Yep. Couldn't get an SUV in our group, and we didn't have the Suburban right. I think at the time. Could not get an SUV yep. that would work. Like I've that. done the same thing. When I've owned my Odyssey, uh, my wife and I are in-laws, three full-size bikes standing up you know, mm -hmm. because you can slide the seats over you can mm -hmm. you know all the luggage and they don't pack light you know so i mean <laughs> it's yeah a, a minivan is where it's at but not everybody buys a minivan some people are looking for something that's fun to drive or handles well and we got a couple questions asking about that uh from edgar chambon excuse me if i pronounced that wrong which i probably did hey guys was wondering if you would discuss the steering feel nowadays of a bmw versus the steering feel of cadillacs most American car reviews, they say Cadillac steering feels better. Whereas in European car reviews, they still say BMWs is better. What's your opinion on this? And what would you consider the car nowadays that offers the best steering feel? Gabe, you wanna start? Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, we all know that uh, with the move to electric power steering, uh, some of the steering, steering feedback uh, has been lost. And, uh, and BMW knows that because it learned that uh, the hard way. Uh, now Cadillac uh, has, chosen uh, a pretty uh, very uh, famous supplier for that, uh, ZF, and uh, it's one of the better systems in the business. And that's uh, what they, uh, they have in the uh, ATS and the CTS. Which are both terrific driving cars. Um, they, and they are, and they really work well. Um, so, I mean, some manufacturers get uh, tuning electric power steering better than others. Uh, Volkswagen Audi is better at it uh, than others. Ford is pretty good Ford at it. Ford is terrific at it, yeah. Um, so, uh, but if you really want good, terrific steering, then it's uh, pretty much these days only Jaguar and Maserati that remain hy hydraulic. But is it worse? Do you think you need to seek those out to get a good driving car? No, uh, I think uh, if you if you get, I mean, it's it's steering alone. It, it's it's hard to look at steering alone. I mean, it's part of a You're whole right. composite Absolutely. that's called handling. So uh, is that what uh, they call it? <laughs> so there, oh, there's, no, uh, <laughs> so uh, for the benefit of those uh, who get hung up on steering, you know. But anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, Cadillac ATS is a good driving car. The 3 Series uh, is pretty good now. The Mercedes uh, C-Class not too C -class bad. C-Class is quite good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, I think the ATS would surprise a lot of people. Yeah, I, I yeah. think the ATS is a bit sharper in the 3 Series. But again, I think it's part of the overall package. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, John, your thoughts? I was looking at Japanese reviews, and they said the Infinity. You know, Q. The Q50s <laughs> and the Lexus IS is <laughs> Lexus fabulous. Is a, yeah, I, I, I totally. There's, natu agree. there's some nationalism going on. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just providing you with cars. <laughs> I mean, let, let's I'm, I'm glad you brought up Infinity. Infinity is actually uh, bringing back hydraulic steering. Are they really? The, to the uh, Q, what is it? Q60, the, uh, the G37. <laughs> yeah. 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 We used, what we used to call Q50. Q50 because yeah. yeah. the 60s are coming It's just not worth like figuring it out. They'll come up with a new. Right. Now, ATS, CTS, yeah. very nice. You, you, you don't go in there feeling wanting for more. Like you kind of did with the three series sedan that first came, you know, or the five series in particular, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, addressing yeah. that nationalism comment, I mean, we're big BMW fans, and it would be, it's, like you said, you wouldn't suspect a Cadillac to drive as well as it does. I mean, you, you, those you, cars drive. Really you kind of well. expect the BMWs to perform the way their, their reputation. Uh, you know, gets there five minutes before they do. That, but that's but that's why the the ATS is so surprising to me. I know how you feel about the the Q system. The the controls oh, can be yeah, a yeah. complete 
Yeah, I'm going to censor that. Q but, as in uh, crime upon ergonomics. But right? but but the but the, the 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 driving experience of the ATS, whether on the streets, we we, we had the the track time this this fall at Monticello. Uh, it, it, the ATS completely surprised me how good it was on the track. Yeah, and actually one other thing on on while we're talking about Cadillacs, uh, we we loved our test CTS. That was a terrific car to drive. We lost our shirt on that car because you if you go bet. out, if you want a CTS and the first year reliability was okay, it's like seventeen, eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars off of leftover CTSs. Yeah, there's a, you know, there's a huge, there's initial discount, there's loyalty, there's conquest money, um, then there's negotiation room, there's also uh, a lot of money to the dealer that, that that from the manufacturer that they'll pass to you. So you could do well. On the CTS specifically, you could do well on the Cadillac line. It's so perfect. you'd like to know that we lost about $25,000 on the CTS, and uh, whereas the Range Rover only cost us $5,000 because... That car's going, <laughs> that car's going whoever bought that's going to ship it straight to China. And they're yeah, definitely not well, Russian now because they're, you well, know, well, 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 oil well, price. Yeah, Russian. Uh, another <laughs> question about handling. And the same sort of topic. I drove an old late 1990s BMW 3 Series and liked how compact, sporty, and agile it was. Now I tested a 2014 3 Series and was surprised how big, heavy, unresponsible this iconic car has become. And that's what automakers unfortunately do because of predominantly U.S. buyers. And you, Consumer Reports, spend a big chunk of your reviews, ratings, and talks about how a car is roomy or spacious, even in cars like a Mini or WRX, forgetting that it kills driving characteristics. Please remember about it. Wow. Well, I wouldn't, bl I wouldn't be so quick to blame us for that. Uh, <laughs> there is another market out there called the Chinese market, which car manufacturers are admitting that they're catering to. So if you talk to BMW, to Porsche, to everyone, the Chinese market is important. Well, and, what's and, important and that about drives it, a lot of these decisions. Well, to give a little more background, what's important about it is the fact that in, you're often being driven. You're not driving. And, you know, the idea of driving for joy isn't really, you know, the whole Jeremy Clarkson Top Gear, you know, it's as awesome to drive. It's not there. It's, well, it's how, it, how big it has is become the secondary. Yeah. But, but I would say if this person is longing for that late 90s BMW feel, I mean, check out that M235. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, that we just tested. I mean, that to me is like old school BMW. And you owned you owned a late '90s BMW, so um, right. you know the, the ATS feels like that. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a Fiesta ST feels like a Focus ST feels like that. I'm just not willing to say that just because a car is bigger means it needs to drive bad. I mean, a Fusion drives terrifically. Mm -hmm. A um, Chevy SS. It's a big car. Well, and how can you say the, the mini, well. even the Mini Cooper today is a big car? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a little bit bigger than when it started, but it, I wouldn't call it a big car. Yeah, I mean, also, yeah, you know, we do say the WRX has plenty of room in the back seat. It's not a bad thing. I don't think the car is big. There's, there are big cars that are small inside. There are small cars that are big in size. Talking about room is not the fact that it has to be Golden Corral buffet ready for, you know, its occupants. <laughs> it's a car that, you know, whether you're, you're crammed wow. in, you know, the Lexus IS is small overall. It's grown, but it's still small. It's not just the fact that the footprint is gigantic. The Ford, tw Ford Taurus looks big, but it's really, really exactly. small inside. Exactly. Right. Also, I mean, there to wrap it up, there are small cars that drive big, and there are big cars that drive small. And again, it's it's more than steering. It's more than size. It's how you put all the parts together. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Our next show, it's the best and the worst of 2014. We take a look back at the year. We hope you can join us then. 